Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Aspectic turntable with speakers. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So it has some features listed on the side here. It may be hard to see, but I'll just read them off. It says RCA left and right output to other speaker systems. So this has an Audio-Technica AT3600L cartridge on it. it has two 18 watt speakers, adjustable counterweight. We have more listed on the back. This has USB output, so you can use it with Audacity. You could use this with other software too to record your vinyl to digital files. It has two speeds, 33 and 45 RPM. It comes with a 45 RPM adapter. So let's get this open. Okay, so there are some boxes in this box. I'm going to pull this off my bench and pull those boxes up here. Okay, here are the two boxes. So this will be the turntable. These would likely be the speakers. So there are speakers. So these are made of MDF. They have foam feet on the bottom. There's a port in the back. The wires are permanently connected. The wires just shy of four feet, so maybe 46 inches or so. Looks like the grills will come off. There we go. You can see they're MDF grills. And here are the speakers. We have a woofer and a tweeter. So they're two-way speakers. And the wire is the same length on both speakers. Let's get the turntable out. Here we have the user manual, CD, some wires. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. And here's the turntable, it's upside down, I'll flop it. Here we have the platter. So that is pretty heavy. I think that's made of steel. Yes, that would be made of steel. Under here we have the power transformer. This is 15 volts at three amps. Power cable's around five foot. So it has a quick start guide here. You'll want to read through this. I'm probably gonna cover most of it, but there may be some things I skip. Also has a regular user manual. So you'll want to read through this also. So this has more detailed setup information. It also talks about connecting it up with Audacity. Oh, here we have an alignment protractor for the cartridge. This would be the Audacity software, warranty card, RCA cables, a belt tool, USB-B to USB-A cable, and a 45 adapter. Here we have the anti-skate weight. So before I open this up, let's take a look at the sides and back. So this has a faux wood grain on it. Let's see if we can turn this over carefully. So here are the feet. There are three feet. That way it's always level, just like a tripod. They flex a little bit, so they're soft rubber. Here's the ball bearing that the pivot sits on. Looks like we have the electronics in here. Here's the back. We have the speaker inputs here. So left is over here, right is over here. We have a grounding lug, DC in, USB. We have RCA out. Then we have a switch for phono or line. So you can output this to a traditional receiver. Now, if your receiver has a preamp, you can switch this to phono. If it does not, you can switch it to line. Or if you have some other external preamp, you can switch it there. That's a nice feature to have on an entry level turntable. Then we have the on off switch and the other speakers there. So let's open this up. Tilt the lid back, okay. So this tool here is for handling the belt. So we can pull it back here and pull it off. We're gonna pull this off and pull the foam out. You can see there's grease on there. We want to leave that there. So that will spin in there. Now we can put the belt back on. Now you don't absolutely need to use this, but if you're concerned about getting grease and oil on your belt, you can use this tool. There we go. So this is not on here straight, super easy to fix. You just rotate it and it will find its center, like so. Now we can put the platter on. Now this isn't mechanically linked to this, it's just the weight that holds it on there and we'll put the felt on. So it might be easier to turn this. So they want us to turn this 10 times. That's probably to make sure the belt is tracking properly. Okay, put the felt on. So before I unpackage this, I'm going to connect the speakers up. Now it doesn't matter which side is right or left. So this is pretty straightforward. We'll pull down on these. You'll insert the red into the red, the black into the black. Something that's a little confusing here is this says left, but this will be on the right side. I'm just gonna hook it up so the speaker's on the same side as the terminal. I don't know if that's correct. It doesn't really matter to me. I think most people are just gonna want some stereo separation and also make sure your speakers are in phase. So if you hook one of the pairs backwards, it can cut out your low end bass. So you wanna make sure those are plugged in properly. Okay. 
So now I can remove this packing material. So next we need to set up the anti-skating. So we have this weight on some filament. So here it says to hoop it around the third groove here. So it's hard to see, but this has little notches on it. The numbering starts from this side. So we have one, two, three, four. So it's the second notch from the back. And this is going to hang down here. So we need to make a little loop in this. So I'll just tie a little slip knot with the slip side on the weight. Where I'm putting this is kind of arbitrary. I may have to pull it out and try again. I'm going to go with that. So that's the anti-skate weight. So I have a scale to help set this up, but I'm waiting on batteries. So before I do the setup, let's test out the Bluetooth capabilities of this. So we'll turn it on and then I'll hit mode and switch it to Bluetooth. I'm going to connect this up to my iPad. So if we go to the Bluetooth settings, it says turntable, I'll tap on that. I'll turn the volume up a little bit. Okay, so it's connected. So here I have some music, I'll play a track. The short track, let's play a longer one. Okay, so I can turn the volume up on my iPad and then I can control it also with the record player. So those are separate volume controls. So let's hit play pause here. So that does pause the music on my device. Let's try another track here. So the sound sounds pretty good for speakers of this size. Now, I don't feel it in my chest. These are not huge woofers. It has a pretty full sound. So if you have some really thumping sound, don't expect these speakers to be able to reproduce that well. But I'd say the mid to low range is quite good. It sounds nice. Now, I do like that these are two-way speakers, so you actually do have a woofer and tweeter in here. So you have a fuller sound than you might with just a single speaker. So these speakers would not replace like a home theater setup, but if you want a turntable and some speakers in a bar area, bedroom, living room, somewhere like a music listening area, I think for a lot of people, this will meet their needs. Now to switch back to turntable, we'll just hit mode again and it switches to phono over here. Then when we're done, we can turn it off. Okay, so it's later in the same day. I was waiting on batteries for my stylus scale and they came in, so this is up and running now. Now there's two ways you can set the tracking force. I'll go over both of them. So I'm going to take the cover off the front here. I'll take the lock off. I'll press this lever down. So I'm going to pull the tone arm out here and I want to adjust this. Now this rotates back and forth. Now I want to adjust it until this is horizontal. So right now it's resting on this. So I want to turn it out to put a little more weight on the back. And I'll kind of lift it a little bit till it's just kind of floating there. Okay, so now it's lifting up a little bit. And right there, it's floating. So I'm going to move this over and lock it in place. Then without moving the silver part, I'm going to move the black part until zero is right in the middle. There's a little line kind of cut in the tone arm. Okay, so that's on zero. Now the manual has a procedure here. You can pause and read through this if you've lost your manual. It says the cartridge tracking force goes up for two grams for one rotation of the circle. So you want to rotate it one time back to zero and then land on 1.5. So we're going to be rotating in because we want the force down. So now we're turning the silver part and it will turn the black part too. And we're back at zero here and then we'll turn it to 1.5. So now this should put the force down. And if you don't have a scale, you'll leave it at this. I actually have the scale, so I'll measure it. So I'll turn the scale on and it has a weight, a five gram weight. I'll put that on there. It's measuring, well, it said 4.99, but that's pretty darn close. Close enough for what I'm doing. So I'll unlock the tone arm here and I'll come and I'll set the needle right on the dot in the middle of the scale. So here I got three and a quarter and our goal was three and a half. So I'd say that's pretty good. So I can add a little bit more force here. So I'm going to lift this up. I'll turn this a little bit. 
and I'll set it back down. And I'll turn it until we have the right weight. There's 357. There's 350. Oh, 349. I'm good with that. So it looks like there is a screw on the back. I could tighten that down if I want to lock it in. I'll probably run it a while and recheck it just to make sure it stays correct. So now I can lift up on this, move the tone arm back, lock it in place. So when I did the balance method, I was just off by a quarter of a gram. You don't have to use a scale, but since I had it, I figured I might as well use it. Okay, so I have the tracking force set. I think we're all ready to play a record. So here I have Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. I was happy to find this because it's public domain, so I should be able to play it. So I just recently cleaned this. I don't know the condition of it though. So we'll put it on the platter. We have the lever up, I'll unlock it. I'll bring this over to the edge of the record. Now I've already taken the cover off and I will hit play. And we're on 33. We can just press 33 if we don't know. That will spin up and I can drop this lever down and it will play the record. Now you wanna make sure you have the volume turned down to at least some extent. Now when this gets to the end, you'll need to hit stop, lift the lever up and return the tone arm. It's not automatic. So here it's playing. Now you can see the isolation here. If I tap on my bench versus here, this is amplified through the speakers. So you don't want to tap on that, but the feet are isolating it from some of the vibration. So hopefully some of that's coming through on the microphone. It has a warm sound like you'd expect with a record player, and you do hear some pops every once in a while. So now if I want to skip to somewhere else, I'm going to turn it down because I don't know what the volume will be. I can lift this up gently and place it down somewhere else. That sounds very nice. Now when I'm done listening to this, I can lift up on this, move the tone arm over to the side, lock it, and hit stop. Now once we're playing, we can cover this. It will play with the cover closed. That can keep small children and such from touching it, or maybe adult children from touching it. Now when you're not using it, it will keep the dust off. I think classical music sounds so nice on vinyl. Okay, so I set this up on this table. This is around 16 by 44. Now this isn't the permanent location for this. This was just a place where I could demonstrate what it would look like set up, and you can kind of see the size comparison. So the front of the turntable is just under 16 and a half inches from the wall, and in that orientation, the lid can fold up and rest against the wall. Now typically it would go back further if you had more room, but this fits on this nicely. Of course you could have this on a narrower table and have the speakers on shelves or something. So the record just finished playing, so we can lift up here and we'll move the tone arm back. And we'll play pause and we'll stop the record. Let's cut back to my studio 
where we'll finish this up. So that's the Fectic turntable with speakers. If you're looking at a turntable that fits in a box to play some old records you have, I think something like this is a much better option. We have a real Audio-Technica cartridge here. You can actually set the tracking force on it. It has sound isolating feet on it, and it has detachable speakers. I have these right next to each other. If you want better stereo separation, you can set these apart. Not only will this give you better sound, this will also likely be better on your records since you can set the tracking force and you have a good quality stylus. Now, if you want to take it up to the next level, it does have output on it, so you you can send this into a receiver and it even has that switch to turn the preamp on or off. So that's a really nice feature in a turntable at this level. And a really cool feature of this is that it also has Bluetooth. So if you have this in your bar, your den, your office, and this is your only sound system, when you're not listening to records, you can pair it up with your phone and stream music to it. And I went through the setup of it. Don't be intimidated by that. If you go through the instructions, you can handle setting this up if you're not familiar with setting up a turntable. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, Goodbye.